Hello and welcome back to the Ascent Out of Avernus. I'm Quack and I am here with another friend. Would you like to introduce yourself? No. Then I'll but introduce I'll you for you. You're gonna do it anyway? Yep. That's... Yeah, I am, um... Fuck, what was I gonna be again? I've legitimately forgotten. I believe you wanted to be called the Schemer Lemur. There we go. I'll forget that by next week. Just as it should be. Excellent. And the subject of of today's speed paint is... Oh, me? June. Yes. I, yes. Right, I, I... June, the... Uh, was it wild magic or... Uh, Phoenix Soul. Phoenix Soul Sorcerer. Yeah, I, I remembered at one point... We were at least under the impression, I think, of it being wild magic, because we didn't know about the Phoenix stuff until later. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll yeah, get, I get that. we'll get back, we'll get more in, into that when we get on to the actual recording, starting now. So, June, who was he? Yeah. Well, was he still? He is still alive. Uh, that is that is a very important yeah. thing, especially with my characters. Well, but he isn't in terms still of alive. Within... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. In terms of uh, within June... the story of Avernus, it really depends when when you ask, because Jin was my first attempt at this funky thing called character growth. Um, hadn't tried it before. I figured no would be as good a time as any. Um, and so when when we were all rolling characters up for this, I decided, hey, let's let's craft a starting point and see where it goes rather than an end point, which then doesn't happen because I've fallen into that trap before. Uh, so yes, with with June, I came up with a rough backstory. I came up with his flaws, his failings, and the, everything that made him not amazing and sort of worked from there. Um, so at the start of the campaign, when we first meet June, he is basically uh, sad, alone, paranoid, but not without justification. Um, and and yeah, seems he had to... Yeah, pretty good reason to be um, afraid. Yeah, and, and basically halfway convinced that no one would ever want to do anything but wave pitchforks at him. So, so yeah, yeah, you know, just standard friendly stuff. Weird then how him falling in with the right crowd also meant going to hell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hell is where the heart is. I mean, he met people who liked him for who he was and... Yeah, but that is By the that time is true. we we found out what his actual race was, we already liked him, so we weren't gonna just go. Okay, now we hate you. Yeah, Although I didn't get R to be there for that one since I had my show. Yes, so Robin was the first to figure it out um, after I accidentally blew up an entire uh, gas main and knocked myself out. Okay, I didn't hear about this part when <laughs> oh, when uh... this uh, story beat came out. Yes, so we were in the sewers, and there were some things over yonder. I can't even remember what they were. G generic baddies of some kind. Oh, was this? Oh, was this? Um, in the sessions beforehand with the uh the gas chamber. Well, it wasn't a gas chamber so much as it was a part of the sewer that happened to have had a bit of a leak full of natural gas. And as a player, I'm well aware that this is the sort of thing that can happen in dank underground chambers. But as a character, June's first thought was, scary, kill it, and so he tossed a firebolt, um... And to be fair, they all died. It was effective. And then he nearly did as well. Yeah, I'm kind which... of I'm kind of disappointed about this thing that I was trying to do with the... with the little blush over his, his face, because it looks, yeah. it looks good here, but then it doesn't really show up later on. And I was very disappointed Cur about that. 
Curse of the Drow, I think, is that if, if, if you want to put some more colour in their face, it's already pretty dark to begin with. It's very difficult to pick up. It's dark and colourless, is what it is. It's, like, grey. It's proper grey. Well, no, I He's only it half looked, drought, it looked but... fine until, um, until I started adding the lighting was the issue. Yeah, I think it's because... So, so the blush darkens it a bit, but the thing is, is that any light on on Dark Elf skin is going to seem quite light, so I think it's going to be very difficult to darken it and then lighten it without the light just being so bright compared to the the base tone and the slightly darkened blush that it just kind of <laughs> overshadows it all, despite being light. Mm. It was a good idea in theory, it just didn't pan out like I hoped it would. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so so Robin figured out that uh, Shun, because he, he was all wrapped up to begin with, um, he all barely got a look at his eyes, and then it was when Robin was healing him up after the first time he accidentally self-detonated that uh, she got a look at it, but she didn't mention anything, uh, which was a uh, an odd one because again, with his with his backstory historically with Jun, it's the second someone finds out he's a half drow or that he can set things on fire, he tends to suddenly become public enemy number one, so Yeah, that was nice. Then we continued through the sewers and then we met the hag. I think it was a hag. Oh, uh, was that the one that you um that you yeah. decided to do the bleeding eye trick on? <laughs> so yeah. Whatever it was, it disguised itself as just an old lady and was like, ah I'm just looking for my child. And I was a little suspicious of this. And I think I incited. I want to say I probably I, incited. I think you did, and you knew that she was um, lying. But you couldn't, yes, and you so... couldn't get her to actually admit to it. Yes, so I popped Heart of Darkness, allowing her to witness some very traumatic moments. I <laughs> used Minor Illusion to cause my eyes to start bleeding, and then I looked her dead in the face and screamed quite shrilly, Don't lie to me! And she took exception to that, and then I set her on fire. I mean, she wasn't the only one. Lorelai was crying in the corner. <laughs> it... Yeah. I mean, you can't expect him to be a master of social skills. Fair. And it worked, kinda. I mean... To an extent, I, I, I can't fully remember... I can't remember entirely how that um ended up, but... Uh, after catching fire... She, didn't, she wasn't able to kill us. She turned invisible and ran away, I think. I don't know if we ever bumped into her again. Still, like... It's fine. All in all, a success. Yeah! And then, uh... Yeah, wrapped up the whole sewers thing. Everything was definitely fine. Someone may have got cursed, I vaguely recall. It, it, yeah, that's the... Happen. Was it not in the sewers as well that we found the um the shield that Robin sold? No. No. Uh that wasn't until a bit later. Uh so after was we came in out the, the house? Yeah, uh, yeah, so no, it was yes, it was in the house, but so we came out the sewers and then we popped along to the boat, got a little betrayed on the boat, which, you know, really not building this trust in other people shtick. Um, then we went up to the estate. I can never remember names. I'm very bad with names. Uh, yeah, we did a little bit of very stealthy investigation. Um, we barged in. We, I say we, Drummond brutally murdered the butler. He did. And I still distinctly <laughs> remember the fact that... <laughs> Lorelai cried about you and your bleeding eye thing, but then she looked at the the butler, his head just caved in by the door and going, Ew. It was a doorknob. It was a knocked open doorknob that murdered this guy. It wasn't malice. It wasn't even intended. 
Ah, oh, and then, yeah, yeah, went our way through the house. I remember trying to get a word and just be like, hey, let's not do that again. But before I could say anything, Drummond was already slamming down more doors. Yeah. Yeah. We then we that went... a lot. Yep. Then we went upstairs, found a suit of armor with glowy eyes, and June had a panic attack. Because that and definitely then, didn't. And then Walter didn't came bring to the rescue. Anything. Oof. Uh, then we went downstairs, where things really took off. We had a lot of fun sneaking around. We met yeah, Eridus. The part who... where I did all the highlights and realized they were on the wrong layer. Yeah. It's fine. It, it, it happens. It was... I realized yeah, that, I could, that I could just undo the whole thing. Yeah, there, there yeah, you're there realizing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, went went down to the basement, met Eridus, um, met a guy who had effectively uh, just casually tossed the city into hell, and he was also uh, working with an evil magic shield and doing questionable stuff. Uh, and and. Jun, being a paragon of dealing with people, casually gave him a little, you know, friendly hand on the shoulder, and then cast burning hands. That's what he got for for trying to deceive him. He died horribly. He did. Yeah, but that earned Eridus's respect. So, yeah. Which is more than what Eridus gave your next character. But we'll get to that yeah, when we get to that. Yeah, that's true. So, then we parted along, did some some investigations. Ooh! It's around this time that Rhea shows up in the story, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Um, Rhea was an interesting character, wasn't she? She didn't, didn't do that much at yeah. first. I think, I think when she first turned up, I don't remember if I tried to to use Haunted One. I think I might have. And then I she just turned around and used... It... Yeah, I don't remember what it was you did, but it was one of those cases where you both got to see each other's traumas and you kind of bonded over that. Kind of. I, I can't remember if I actually used the Haunted One background feature on her, but she definitely used it on June, who, who then got to to experience what it's like to have your entire city just up and cease. Um, and that was fun. Partly also because I think as, as a character he wasn't wasn't really used to to meeting anyone who'd had it worse than himself. I think that was a real factor as well. Um, and I think to some extent that's that's the first time he has I guess what you could call a heroic impulse in that he's just like, oh shit, someone as sad as I am, they shouldn't be. This is a bad. We should fix this. Yeah, just not wanting someone to suffer like he's had to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely wasn't self-inflicted. But, yeah, so off off down to, was it Kendall? Keep... It yeah, was that was that was the session where I couldn't join because I had um, I had you... my show that week. I don't think you missed all that much. It was mostly yeah, that travel. Was, that was just talking kind of... to some. Yeah. Yeah, because I couldn't make it. I think there was more focus on that being like side quests and shopping and stuff. Barely even that, to be honest. Um, there was. Bits and pieces. It was mostly just travelling down to Candlekeep. We talked to a character and then get forwarded on to an otter. And then we met an otter, who was also a wizard. I believe he was a wizard before he was an otter, but he was definitely both. And there was an elephant there, a very small elephant that could also fly. Yes, um Lulu. Lulu and the otter wizard. And then the otter wizard sent us to hell! And not even in the way that wizards generally do with a misplaced fireball. Yeah, I... just straight up portaled us into hell. Yeah, I came quite back impressive. and put in, in the chat, hey, so what did I miss? Yeah, so we <laughs> went to hell. 
You told me you weren't going to make progress. Well, well, you told me that it was going to be side stuff. What do you mean you went to hell? I, well, you know, we had yeah, a plan. And then it was actually explained to me what happened, and I stopped being upset. For what it's worth, we had a plan. And then it went to hell. <laughs> yep, everything went to hell. So yeah, we, we get to hell. Um, and and things are, you know, it's going reasonably well. Managed to put on my disguise shoes. Managed to pass myself off as a demon at one point. Very, very nice. Good to see Jun doing something subtle. Um, you know, we're potting around. We're, we're in the Elturel at this point. Um, so I think there's yeah. also a, a fair bit of just, oh, there's a bunch of people here who are having a very bad time. Um... Yes! And and so around this time, probably keep it generally known for the viewers, uh, I, I was talking to our, our DM about a possible subplot for Jun. <laughs> uh, because Jun ah, was yes. a phoenix soul sorcerer. We didn't know um, that. What is a phoenix without a good death and rebirth? Yep. And so we, we began plotting a scripted death and rebirth of Jun in order to you know, highlight that aspect of his character. And so we're, we're plotting this in the background. Not letting on at all, I might add. I'm actually quite proud that I didn't let anything slip. Though I think we probably hinted I mean, here I can't there. speak for the others, but, like, this was my first uh, D&D <laughs> game, so I was still learning the basic mechanics, so I would not have picked up on this at all, regardless I don't of think how obvious any of the was. others did. <sighs> People keep forgetting how, um... Schemey I can be. I do like to scheme. But yes, so we have this plan of June will will get killed off a, f a fair while from now, be reborn, etc, etc. I'm working out details, but it's fine. And we uh, we end up in the cathedral? Yes. Where there's a lot of skeletons kicking about. Yeah, we, we fought uh, some demons or devils. Probably devils. devils. Matt will scream at me about that in the comments. <sighs> same difference, same difference. It's basically the same thing. He will scream about about he will scream at you about that in the comments. It's it's the same thing. There's there's no difference. I said it every session. I'll say it again. <laughs> there's no difference. But yeah, and then we uh got through some fighting and we got into a nice little room with I think a boss and a bunch of really heavy hitting minotaur yes. skeletons. V very large scaly boys. And I'll admit this was perhaps slightly metagamey of me, um, but we'd recently hit level 6 and June had picked up a fun little ability that meant when he died, he didn't die, he exploded in a fireball and then remained on one health. And I was kind yep. of eager to test this out, so I ran into a bunch of these Minotaur skeletons Point blank fireballed myself and all them, and because it reduced me to zero, I then exploded into flames, which also damaged them, killing at least one, I might add. Uh, I then basically came back on one health, which was fine, you know? I mean, sure, I might take a hit, but I'd, I'd done quite a lot of damage. And then one of the Minotaurs turned around and decided to whack me. Uh, I'll be perfectly frank here, I thought it would be dead by this point. I thought they'd all be dead. I figured yeah. fireball and mantle of flames, phoenix spark if, combo. If like that's gotta work. If I'm remembering correctly, I think it was Drummond, Lorelei, and I want to say Eridus were all in the room at the time. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. You were all just outside the room. I specifically ran in, made sure no one was in radius and detonated. I and then remember the big... at least Lorelai was at a vantage point where she could see this clearly, and this oh, was her first You could all time. see she into was, the room. This was the first time that she was witnessing a death that wasn't an enemy. Yeah. And uh, she didn't handle it well. Yes, so the, the Minotaur skeleton turns around, smacks me with an axe, does a crit that actually happens to be enough to not only drop me below zero, but drop me below zero to the tune of slightly over my maximum HP, which killed me instantly. This was quite inconvenient for everyone involved. Uh, myself, the DM, our future plans for June, 
and the party who wanted to not be down a member. Uh, luckily, a couple of helpful things had happened in previous sessions. We had rescued Iridus, who happened to be a healer, and Robin had stolen a very convenient diamond brooch worth about 300 gold. Thus, yep. Iridus was able to pull off Revivify and bring June back. Though, <laughs> most people had forgotten about those diamonds. That's a good catch on that one. Whew. So, uh, crisis, crisis averted, despite the very dramatic death. For the time um, being. For the time being. Uh, though, he... Well, while dying, June dropped a, a necklace that had belonged to his mother, and never did get it back, I don't think. Or if he did, it wasn't until the very yeah, end of it, the campaign. I think what happened was, at the end of the campaign, uh, it wasn't brought up in like our epilogues, but I wanted to have a thing where um, Lorelai would help him get it back. I thought that was going to be something we could RP, but it ended up just cutting straight to the epilogues. Yep. So, so yeah, family heirloom lost, but it's fine. And we, we, we progress on. We sort of bop in through the story as we do. We picked up a nice little truck. We met Mad Maggie. Oh! Oh yes, yeah, we met was... Mad Maggie and her plethora of little fun creatures. I think and this we was met... also around the time you started your Seduce Rhea meme. Yeah, so... <laughs> there was a story to that. It, it's not a good or a long yeah. story. <laughs> the, the out of character reasoning here was the DM said something that irritated me. To in some way, I can't remember the details, but I just turned around and went, well, screw you, I'm gonna seduce your NPC, we'll see how you like it. And that kind of became an ongoing meme. I actually did set up a custom spell to reduce, to seduce Ray. I thought reduce Ray. He had 20 that was, that's, that's at one difference. point. Yeah, he did not 20 at that. But then I rolled the it quite a lot. <laughs> and the TM just refused to accept it. But then again, there was also in, in character, it wasn't an entirely unreasonable thing. You know, people bonding over trauma. It's not the basis for a long-term relationship, but these things happen. But also, he did, he did everyone else around to was... Her, didn't he? Yeah, there was a bit of that. I think also the... the sort of psychological... If... a certain degree of... her trauma is a thing that's still happening, and if we can fix it, then maybe it proves these things can be fixed. Because June's own traumatic past mostly involved the very definite death of his parents. Which is not a thing that could really be undone. I suppose at this point it could, if we got to like ninth level spells, but yeah, for for a sort of low level adventurer, that's that's a very final thing, whereas I take it the deaths of his parents were in such a way that even being a phoenix or part phoenix I'm not sure how that really worked would really help no also the sorcerer stuff it's it's hit or miss like not not every generation picks up the powers and I think you need to train with it a fair amount before you actually get the not dying stuff all right um 